Return to Monkey Island has been in the hands of fans for a month now, and everyone has their own stories connected to the game. Despite being an impossible notion at one point, the third Ron Gilbert game was finally released and resolved after 32 years. In this video, I will do my best to explain the ending of this game and the implications it has for every other game in the series. Guybrush Elaine and Evil LeChuck have had their entire lives uprooted by the revelations in Return to Monkey Island. And it's a lot to wrap your head around. 30 years ago, The Secret of Monkey Island came out and there was one thing it never really did, reveal the actual secret. And that's the premise of Return to Monkey Island. An aged guy breast has set out to find the secret once and for all. Before diving into the ending, we need to quickly recap what happened at the beginning of the game and the massive reveal of when this game takes place on the timeline, something that has left some players a little confused. The game picks up directly after Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge and reveals that the story of that game was actually being acted out by Boybrush and Chucky. They are Guybrush's son and his son's friend respectively. This throws the legitimacy of the ending to Monkey Island 2 into question as Guybrush later reveals that the kids have changed the ending of the story. It's also confirmed that they are acting out Guybrush's own adventures, which should serve as some reassurance that the main contents of The Secret of Monkey Island and LeChuck's Revenge actually did happen. But what has changed is the perspective. We now know that the games we played have been filtered through two unreliable narrators, Guybrush and Boybrush. And that goes a long way to explaining basically all of the discrepancies, weird behaviours and how Guybrush is so successful in the things he does. He could have been lying. The reveal Boybrush is not some secret 30 year old plan, it's a relatively new addition mostly because everyone who likes Monkey Island is 30 years older than they used to be. They literally have kids of their own. And it made the ending make sense in quite a sweet and sincere way after waiting such a long time for this to happen. So for us to be able to discuss the ending of Return to Monkey Island we need to understand understand these three things. Guybrush is telling the story to his son. Guybrush is an unreliable narrator, and as Elaine confirms at the end of the game, the ending has changed over the years. And now we're going to get into the discussion about the ending. Hence, if you have not finished the game and want to savour the ending for yourself, it's time to bookmark the video, subscribe to the channel, and come back once you're finished. Okay, now that they're gone, we can get into this thing. As I'm sure you already know, dissecting this ending isn't going to be that simple. For starters, not everyone has the same ending, and the interpretations of the ending are different for everyone, which is by design. So you need to know that what I talk about here leans heavily on my interpretation of the ending but I'll do my best to approach this thing from as many angles as possible. The ending of this game starts at the beginning of part 5, with Elaine and Guybrush walking through the Monkey Island Forest. This scene serves as a kind of warning for players as Elaine presents Guybrush with a question. For me, the obvious answer is to say it doesn't matter. That felt natural for both myself and Guybrush. It wasn't about riches or glory. Maybe it was a little bit about knowledge, but ultimately it was the thrill of being able to do this. As consequences, it was the thrill to be actually playing this game. And as Guybrush, of course, it was the thrill of the adventure. There is a line at the end of the game that fills in the details of what Guybrush has been doing prior to this game. This may seem like a throwaway joke, but to me it's confirmation that Guybrush had retired from piracy with his head intact. And what does a pirate like Guybrush do after retiring? Since he has a natural proclivity for finding things on the floor, a natural job for him to excel at would be as a flooring inspector. As described in the blurb for the game, Guybrush is lost and adrift before he sets out on this quest. So when he says he's returning to his boring flooring inspector job, he may very well mean it. Once Guybrush begins his descent into the monkey head, we tumble toward the conclusion. Players tackle the last few puzzles as the mighty pirate races to catch up with his longtime nemesis LeChuck. After being sidelined by LeChuck and Lila, it feels like a race against time. Our enemies are going to be the first ones to know the secret and Guybrush will be locked out. It's serious. It feels like we've been working towards this for 30 years. Lila is just a distraction. This is it. Guybrush, LeChuck and the secret of Monkey Island. The game has spent 8 hours was telling us no one else cares about the secret but we do and it's within our grip just as soon as we catch up with the zombie pirate and so we chuck our belongings onto the statue give away our last pieces of eight to buy passage and brutalize the remaining statues to make our way to the final room one last puzzle and it's familiar again it's a sweet and sincere reminder of how much time has passed a code will and it's good to see one again one pirate two pirates and a date. The will rises to reveal a door. Guybrush reaches out to the handle. The Chuck's on the other side. He has the secret. This is it. The final showdown. The door opens and Guybrush steps through. And he's back on Melee Island. 
and he's back on Melee Island. It's instantly disappointing. A little funny, kind of obvious, but more than anything, at this moment, it's disappointing. The moment Guybrush appeared in the alleyway, I felt betrayed. This wasn't what I wanted or what I expected. And then I think back to Elaine. She warned us only half an hour ago that the ending might not be what we wanted. And she was right. But there was still a little more to do before the game rolled the credits. And so you step out into the amusement park and are greeted by Stan. Things start to feel okay. The presentation of the scene was heartwarming and heartbreaking in many ways. As Stan leaves Guybrush with the keys, players are given the option to wrap up the things they want in a way that they want to. I won't go through every single variation of the ending because in my mind there's only really three that matter. And they are Guybrush taking the key, opening the box, and leaving with Elaine. His task fulfilled, the knowledge he saw acquired, and he could now leave the amusement park to carry on with his life. Guybrush takes the key but doesn't open the box, and he leaves with Elaine. He leaves the amusement park knowing that he had won, but holds on to the mystery of the secret, something he could cast his mind back to whenever he wanted to. And the third ending, Guybrush rejects everything he's just seen and returns to Monkey Island. And if you select either of the first two, Guybrush has the option of confirming what happens to his son. Boybrush immediately rejects the ending as hogwash telling his dad that he's changed the ending and he's told something silly. Guybrush can double down and confirm that that really was what happened or he can say something more philosophical. So what actually happened when Guybrush entered the door under the code will? Well, we may never find out. It could be that Guybrush really was just testing escape rooms for Stan all along and none of the adventures really happened. Or maybe Guybrush changed the ending of the story to tease his son. Both are entirely plausible, but we need to cast our mind back to the very start of the game when Boybrush said they were acting out Guybrush's adventures. And if you couple that with this line from Elaine at the end, one thing I'm certain of is that Guybrush is a real pirate and the games we have played are genuine recounts of his adventures retold either by Guybrush or acted out by his son. What the ending is actually doing is answering the question, what was the original secret of Monkey Island? And not, what is the ending of Return to Monkey Island? A small plaque at the furthest point in the endless part of the game confirms this. Ron Gilbert clarified further about this when he joined fellow point and click fan Cress Up on her Twitch channel. During their discussion, he revealed that once upon a time, the secret would have been what many fans had theorized it to be, that Guybrush was in a theme park all along and nothing was real. He went on to say that Guybrush wouldn't have known he was in a theme park, so there would have been an additional mystery to solve about what was really happening. And so the final location and the plaque on the wall are the reveals of the original secret, that the mighty pirate was in an amusement park this whole time. The design of Return to Monkey Island makes it look more like an escape room, but the general idea remains the same. However, this reveal only matters to a very small group of Monkey Island fans. To anyone else, especially players jumping into the series for the first time, it will mean absolutely nothing. For people like me, who have been invested in the series since they were six years old, reading every interview and essentially becoming one with the game, the amusement park reveal is like gold dust. We've waited 30 years for this, right? But anyone starting with Return to Monkey Island, or even those who've played all the games but never really concerned themselves with fan theories, aren't going to understand what's going on. An argument could be made that the ending of Return to Monkey Island parallels that of both Monkey Island 2 and The Curse of Monkey Island. All three games end in the amusement park. But Return to Monkey Island wants you to question the purpose of the amusement park. If you're a fan of the game, who hasn't taken much of an interest in the meta aspect, then this ending isn't going to land. The Chuck and Lila have disappeared, relegated to just animatronics as if they were never real in the first place. One interpretation of this could be that the amusement park is actually based on Guybrush's adventures and he and Stan have concocted the idea together, with Stan adding in surprise elements like the Captain Lila twists. Another interpretation is that Guybrush's quote unquote real adventures weren't the work of a mighty pirate but rather a regular flooring inspector who has grandiosized his experiences at the local escape room. It really is up to you to choose what's happening because the game and its creators never will. Ron Gilbert knows what the ending is to him, but he's staying mum. It doesn't matter, he believes. The audience should draw their own conclusions. And so I'll explain what happened the first time I stepped into the alleyway on Melee Island, overcome with a feeling of disappointment. As I discovered the amusement park proper, greeted by not one but two familiar faces, I felt confident that this 
wasn't the end. This had to be some illusion brought on by either LeChuck or the secret itself. It seemed too abrupt to be an actual ending, so I took my time to look around. When Guybrush speaks to himself in Elaine, he flicks between being confused as to where he is and being comfortable in his surroundings. It was more than a little confusing. I said hello to the pirate leader and Otis, took my picture and collected the key. Convinced there was more to come, with rising expectations, I slotted the key into the chest. I took a deep breath, ready for something to happen that would bring me back into the game and face to face with the chuck. Guybrush reached into the chest and pulled out the secret and, and it was a t-shirt. A twice told joke from the original game. Nice callback I guess. My disappointment started to take over again but I accepted the prize and realised it made sense. I was prepped for disappointment by Elaine beforehand and now that we have the prize the time to leave was among us and the decision to end the game lay firmly at my feet. Together with Elaine we walked under the arch and out of the screen. The final cutscene with Boybrush is the devs interpret interpretation of the fans, he puts into words the disappointment I felt by the ending and gives Guybrush a moment to explain. Dad, that was a silly ending and it didn't even make any sense. You're terrible at endings. No, sorry. He gives the player a moment to choose what the ending means. It's designed to make you think and plant this seed in your mind. To fully experience and start to understand the ending, you need to go back and explore more of the options. If you did exactly as I did, the chances are you too felt disappointed. Like the game cheaped out on you and stole a true ending away from you. It pains me to say it so bluntly, but that's an entirely valid way to feel and one the devs definitely anticipated. Once the game has been completed, a letter from Ron and Dave, the writers, is unlocked, which gives you a little bit about their perspective, how age has been factored into the game, and about having unfinished business. It's a poignant letter that gives you a little insight into why the game even exists. And it wasn't to finish Guybrush's story. No, it was about adults returning to the things they enjoyed when they were young, something that many people lose sight of when they get older. For a lot of people, the simple existence of this game is something that brings a lot of joy to their hearts. Monkey Island might be one of the most treasured games ever among those who've had a chance to play it, and if the ending wasn't what you wanted or what you expected, there is a chance to do things differently. Now we need to talk about the second of three endings that make a significant difference to things. Back through the door. Once Dan hands you the keys and disappears from the park, Guybrush is left with his final tasks, to shut down all the lights and find the secret of Monkey Island. Elaine awaits him at the archway, ready to leave hand in hand with her beloved Guybrush. But Guybrush is confused. He doesn't know what's going on. Just moments ago, he was racing down the belly of a giant monkey to catch up with LeChuck. He solved all the puzzles and was mere seconds away from fulfilling his destiny when it was ripped from him and he appeared in a kind of familiar, but not quite right setting. It's the alley where he first met LeChuck in his Festa Shines top guise, and according to his son anyway, the location where Guybrush prepared a voodoo doll to take down his enemy during the Chuck's revenge. With the keys in his hand, Guybrush can say no, this isn't real, and he can unlock the door and go back into the monkey's belly once again. As he ascends the labyrinth, he contemplates what he sees. As the, he exits the final room, he chooses to reject everything. The Caribbean, as he knows it, is the real world, not whatever illusory spell the Chuck or the secret has forced upon him. He would find Elaine outside the monkey head and they would return to Scurvy Island to continue their important work. A perfectly valid and reasonable ending to the franchise. And as the player, you can embrace this. Guybrush gives up on his quest to find the secret, leaves LeChuck behind, and carries on with his life. Alternatively, he can take the secret, hold the t-shirt in his hand, and still make his exit back to Monkey Island. Despite being an incredibly abrupt ending, this feels more close to my heart, as I believe Guybrush to really be a mighty pirate and not someone pretending. This belief of mine is reinforced by the beginning of the game, when Guybrush claims he's acting out Guybrush's adventures. But if you choose this ending, there is no scene with Guybrush and Boybrush on the bench, and so this ending doesn't feel like it can be the actual ending because Boybrush is real too, right? And this brings me on to the third ending, the one that, that's canon in my head and the only one I think makes sense. Once Stan leaves and Guybrush has had a little exploration around the park, maybe he's unlocked the door and run back through the labyrinth. He contemplated leaving but decided not. That was Elaine, the woman he loves, waiting for him by the archway. He couldn't leave her. He returns to the amusement park, looks over at the animatronic version of LeChuck and picks up the key from Locksmith. For a moment he thinks about opening the chest, but he remembers something Elaine said a little while ago. And boy, she sure is smart. She asked him, what he's expecting to find, and Guybrush, my Guybrush anyway, replies that it doesn't matter. And he meant that, and it's still true as he stares down the chest with nothing to stop him from opening it up. But he doesn't. He puts the key in his pocket, he walks away, and he leaves with Elaine. In the future, he tells his son the story, and his son shoots back, 
that that was a silly ending. Guybrush tells his son that he thought he liked silly endings, indicating that he has, in fact, changed the tale for his son. You have the option to tell him that it was the real ending to the story, but to me, the only answer that makes sense is to say that your mum was right. Elaine then confirms that the ending to the story has been changed over time, and as I've said before, Guybrush is an unreliable narrator, and this reconfirms that. What happened during the return to Monkey Island may well be true, or a version of the truth, but I'm pretty sure that that is a story that's been embellished. The ending of the game isn't supposed to be simple. It's designed to give you something to think about and to draw your own conclusions. For me, it's ending free because I like the poetic nature of the story being told there. No one can tell you what's right though. It really is up to you. If you're dissatisfied with your ending, jump back in and choose some other options. If you want it to be an amusement park and Guybrush was just playing make-believe this whole time, then so be it. That's the ending. Or maybe he is a mighty pirate and his friend Stan created the amusement based on his own adventures. Then that's the ending. Or maybe he was under a spell and nothing in the ending was real. You've still got yourself an ending. It's a choose your own ending game and it's okay if you're disappointed about that. But remember the journey that started in 1990 and the ones that took place after. Remember how it felt to walk out from under the archway at Melly Island when you first arrived to find the secret of Monkey Island and how it felt doing it again in return. And then you should remember what it felt like wondering where the hell the lookout even was in Escape from Monkey Island because what on earth was happening there? But if you are disappointed and angry about the ending, remember to be kind. The devs poured their hearts and souls into this game and if it's not for you, that's okay. But there are, is a nice way to make your feelings known. For more videos on Monkey Island and other adventure games, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Please drop a comment below with your thoughts on the ending, which one you think is canon, and whether you enjoyed it or not.